everybody, it's Amy Astro here, and guess where I'm at? My favorite place in the world, Deer Lake Astronomy Village, with insider access this time. Everybody, this is Amy Astro here, and I am out at Deer Lake Astronomy Village with my Insider Access Pass. Now that is just incredibly cool here, and I've got one of our local owners here, Mr. Ed, and he has been gracious enough to show us the inside of his observatory. So everybody, say hi to Ed. <laughs> Hello there. <laughs> Welcome to Deer Lake. Oh, yeah. And my humble observatory. I'll tell you what, this observatory is incredible. So, tell me, how did you get started in all of this? You know, what possessed you to come out here and build an observatory? <laughs> well, I, I've been involved in astronomy since um, I was about this big, about five, five or six years old. I had a um, a neighbor who was into astronomy, he was a bit older than me, this was during the 60s, during the Apollo era, so I caught the astronomy bug back then and have been looking at stars and collecting telescopes and just enjoying the skies. Um, I, my permanent home is in Atlanta and I purchased uh, this two acre lot uh, here at Deer Lake. Um, two years ago and so this observatory fortunately other than the telescopes was already established here by the previous owner who set it up back in 2006 2007 okay so you're the second owner of this property yeah absolutely and that makes it a little bit easier because uh, the previous uh, owner had worked out all of the bugs and got things up and running. So there you go. I didn't have to come out here and and uh, build the you observatory didn't have to start myself. Fresh. Absolutely. No. But I, I have installed a couple of telescopes. Um, I have three telescopes. Two two of the instruments are on piers, and uh, this one over here, the LX two hundred, which I'm primarily using for visual astronomy uh, because the sky is so beautiful. Milky Way is so bright, and it is a computerized go-to telescope. Um, I have it in the out azimuth mode, which is really good for visual, keeps the eyepiece down at a, a comfortable level. So when I have nieces or nephews <laughs> or my wife and daughter out here with their friends or friends of mine, we can uh, look at things in the night sky. Uh, just basically power it up, uh, calibrate on two stars, and um, <clears throat> uh, we're, we're up and running. And it actually points very good for an out azimuth telescope. Oh, it's um, gorgeous. It's a beast. Yeah, it is pretty big. And I've got it on a tripod right now. I'm trying to figure out, I've been dragging this tripod all over the observatory, the best spot for the telescope. R really, um, this sort of observatory is designed for two telescopes, but we have observers out here with a similar observatory uh, that have anywhere from uh, two to uh, four or five telescopes. So wow. Sort of, sort of in between. That's quite a habit there. Yeah, it is. And uh, let me just say something about, about the observatory itself. It's um, a roll-off roof observatory so um, and I'll show you in a few minutes the roof will back off so we have a great view of the sky. Uh, it was uh, built by a company called Backyard Observatories and they just built a, an observatory next door and when I first came out I uh, really was a little bit disappointed in that it wasn't a domed observatory. I, worked in a, a domed observatory. I have a small sky shed pond dome observatory in my backyard in Atlanta. Okay. And after a couple of weeks out here, I 
really fell in love with the concept of a roll-off observatory because when you roll this roof off, you get a fantastic view of the entire sky. And I can show you that right now. See what I'm talking about. Oh, wow. I do have covers off the telescope, so I want to make sure nothing is pointed out the sun. Uh, yes. Two, I say. Uh, that one up there is the one I'm going to Today is really hot. It's about 90 degrees out there. It's only 1030 in the morning. Um, so we'll roll it off, and um, it will start to warm up very fast. But you can see that we have a uh, wonderful view of the sky. And yeah. I love being out here because I can see shooting stars. I mean, look, wow. Uh, look at the constellations. Just enjoy the beauty of the night sky while looking through and imaging your telescope. Let's say we have a clear night and the uh, stars are shining bright, or you want to take a look at uh, something that is very, very far to the south. This part of the observatory faces to the south, and, you, and you're really going to like this. The view to the south. Oh, wow. I mean, that's just insane, that view. And you can see Wow. the telescopes, all of the telescopes are at a level where I can, um, the meridian crosses from due south here going up to the north and we can get Polaris just over the Okay, just sharp over the point. peak. Yep, over the peak, shows up well. This one, Polaris, is blocked, but because it's an azimuth, it only needs two star alignment, it's not polar aligned. Okay. These two telescopes do need um, polar alignment. They're on uh, German equatorial mounts. And what I have over here is an astrograph, the uh, Celestron Rasa 8 on the AVX Advanced uh, Celestron mount. So these two telescopes are now pointed as you would set up for um, calibration on an evening. You, you would set them up like this and then go through the calibration routine uh, to acquire um, two stars and then you're up and running. They're um, the Rasa 8 inch and the Celestron 14C, 14, the beast. <laughs> the beast. Uh, both, both of these telescopes are computer controlled. So once we've calibrated on a couple of stars, uh, on a cold night or on a hot, humid summer night like there we have now, you can go into the warm room, or here in the south, we sometimes call it the cool room, Observing night, if you're imaging, uh, you would sit in here. I know, Amy, you're a deep sky imager. And this, Ooh. I wanted to show you this. Is that the lagoon? Yep, the Lagoon Nebula. And this was taken with the uh, uh, Celestron 8 inch Rasa. Wow. Um, that's on my bucket list for this season when I get a clear sky. Oh, uh, it's a fantastic camera. The field of view with the uh, one-shot color, uh, the um, Zo ASI, that's the 294, okay. is um, about, we're looking at about two and a half degrees here. And, and actually, this is cropped. And you, you can get the Lagoon and the Trifid, yeah, the Trifid Nebula together in one shot, which is pretty incredible. So you'll absolutely love the Rasa 8 with the but let's come back out here yes. yep. to the sun. We go out to the sun. And so what kind of motor is that? Is that like a garage door opener setup or a... It, it's a little more powerful than a garage door uh, motor. And you can see it has it um, it's this got some 
gear system that goes the straight okay. gear. That's metal. It's not, a, it's not a belt. Yeah, that's metal. And then there's a sprocket there. So this um, is a 110 volt uh -huh. um, motor, and yeah, go ahead and it's and pretty. It up. Yeah, it's it's pretty. I'm gonna have to move my telescopes, but let oh. me, well, while you're filming here, you can see how that works. One thing you have to be careful of in the middle of the night is make sure if you have a roll-off observatory oh, that yeah. your telescopes are stored properly. <laughs> telescopes are out of the way. Close. We can already feel the temperature going down. The temperature significantly dropped with that roof. Yeah, so okay, so you've got some uh, some insulation going on up here, which is wonderful. Yeah, this uh, really helps to keep the uh, temperature down during the summertime. This reflective insulation uh, that goes right up underneath the roof, mm -hmm. and um, I'm told that even without air conditioning in the observatory, if you have this insulation on your roll-off roof observatory, the temperature typically is 10 degrees cooler than what it would otherwise yes. be. So you keep this room climate controlled during the week and stuff for these guys, or? I do. Um, I have over here a dehumidifier that I set on autopilot, and I currently have it set for uh, 50 percent okay. to pull humidity down to 50 percent. So you have to drain them out every so often? Well, I was doing that, but this one actually comes oh, with a drain. a drain, so I run that out. If you had one thing that you wanted to change about this particular setup, what would you do differently now that you've been out here for a while? and Well, I, I absolutely love uh, the setup. I mean, this seems perfect for, to me. And uh, I did have a tripod over here. And one, one thing that I was glad uh, I didn't do immediately uh, was to install uh, the pier. Um, I would recommend if you, you go with the roll-off roof observatory to use tripods to figure out where you want your telescopes, uh, which I, I really like where these two telescopes are. Um, and the thing is, with a cement floor, you can use a, a drill, a hammerjack drill, and drill into the cement and then put your anchor bolts in. So you, um, you, you don't... You don't have any vibration issues here? No, no, uh, it's, it's pretty... Negligible, right? Yeah, negligible. You, you really don't have that issue. And that... Um, will give you the opportunity, if you're building one of these, to um, put your slab down, move your telescopes around, rather than um, configuring where your piers are going to go before you're actually up and running and build uh, the pier support into the cement. If you hold off and then later drill into the cement, you... you You'll be better off. Yeah. But, and then that makes a lot of sense, I mean. You can decide where you would like to put those telescopes. I, I did want to mention that Deerlick is in the process of working with the um, IDA, International Dark Sky Association, oh. to become an IDA park, or an IDS park, an International Dark Sky Park. And we have been working with their administration over the past um, year and a half, and we're hoping <laughs> perhaps by the end of this year, that we will have that International Dark Sky Park designation, which will allow us to uh, have some clout when we go to local communities and governments to say, look, this is a very special place here in Georgia where you can see the Milky Way. Yes. Uh, there are not that many International Dark Sky Parks. Uh, one of the best known Dark Sky Parks is um, in Arizona at the Grand Canyon. And we're a long ways from Arizona. Right. There, there is one other dark sky park here in Georgia at the Okie Pinokie Park. When the moon's not here, you can't see your hand right. in front of your dark. face, so I use the flashlight. But... 
This was my first personal observatory that I've had the chance to tour. It definitely has me thinking about what I want to get when I finally get to build my own observatory. I'm liking the roll off roof approach and the southern flap. The wall flap was a really nice touch given the long southern view that he has. I also like the warm up and cool down section with the window to look into the observatory. That was really neat. Now, being a girl, I think I would like a larger office area just so I could add a small bed to it. Maybe a bathroom would be nice, uh, but you know, that's probably getting a little bit carried away from me. And if I'm not careful, this could end up being my next house. Well guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Please, if you like this video and type of content, please like and subscribe. Leave me comments below about what you would like to see in future videos. And to see more, follow me over on Facebook as Amy Astro or on my brand new website, amyastro.com. I'm wishing you all some great health, clear skies, and I will see you all in my next video.